Hello there everyone and welcome to another edition of Lydia's Crafty Corner with me Lydia in my little crafty corner. So today we are going to be creating this card and I have used the fabulous new watercolour tubes from Artistry from Alta New. So first up I am going to be using an exotic blooms image. So this is from the colouring book that we have and this is the watercolour colouring book. And I just thought that these beautiful kind of magnolias was going to be the one that I wanted to do. To stick that onto my board, all I've done is I've just added a little bit of water underneath and then added it to my palette. For these beautiful flowers that we have here, I'm just going to be using one colour to start with. So this is the Quinecridone Magenta. It is beautiful and you do not need a lot. I rest assure you, this kind of globule of the paint that I have on my board, most of that will actually not be used this time around, but I can leave it on my palette and then reactivate it when I want to use it again. So let's talk through the technique that we are using here. So I'm going to using a wet on wet technique. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add some clean, clear water over the petal that I wish to color in. And then I'm going to take a tiny, tiny touch of that quinacridone magenta. And I'm just going to drop that in right at the base of the petal. I'm then going to take some more clean, 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 clear water, sorry. And I'm just going to dab that around the kind of edges of where the paint goes and that will kind of feather that out a little bit more and the paint is only going to go where you've added the water so that's just going to be kind of a barrier to where you want that water to go. As we're doing a kind of no line watercolor look with this one, what I want to do is I want to color in petals that are not touching each other to start with. So as soon as those petals are dry, I can go back in and color the one next to them. But while the petals are dry, you do not want to paint next to it. Because if you do, you're gonna kind of mix up the colors that we have going on and you're not gonna have this deep rich color at the base and then the kind of soft out to white at the top. Because if you do paint ones that are next to each other, they're just gonna merge together and you're not gonna get the separation of the petals. So I'm just gonna keep going and color in the petals that are not touching any of the wet ones. So that means kind of working further away from that, those wet petals, but don't worry, those petals won't take too long to dry and you can definitely go ahead and color one image in at a sitting. You don't need to worry too much. Also to get around that as well, you can actually color in different parts of the image as well. So we do have like leaves on here, we have the branches. So you can definitely work your way to work into those rather than kind of just focus on the petals as well. So I'm just gonna keep going until I'm kind of happy with the amount of petals that I have wet. And I'm gonna move on to the leaves. So I have some phthalo green and I also have the dark cyan. And all I've done is I've added a little touch of each of those and mixed those together. To darken that up as well, I did also add in a really small amount of the Persian blue as well. So that's just a tiny, tiny touch right at the top and I didn't use all of it either. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix these colors together. I'm then gonna color the leaf that I wish to color in clean, clear water and then drop in that green color just at the top. So I'm, this is how I'm gonna get that beautiful gradient effect is by kind of giving a barrier to that um, pigment with the water. So I did do this for a couple of um, leaves until I decided that I wanted a darker green on this. So what I've done is I've taken some of the quinacridone magenta from the top and also some of the opera lemon and I'm just going to mix those together as well and then I'm going to dab that right at the base of the petals and I'm going to um, leaves, sorry. And I'm going to do this technique for all of the other leaves. 
instead of me just chatting while I color in the leaves and the flowers with the same technique as I was using before, I am gonna add a little bit of music.
So I wanted to add in some darker shadows as well. So what I've done is I have added a little bit of the quinacridone um, purple to that magenta, just a tiny, tiny touch. And I've really, really watered that down. And I'm gonna be using that to add in the shades. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding those right underneath where the petals overlap and then watering that out really quite a lot to bring that shadow out. And you can see that even though that really tiny touch of color is really not a lot, it does make a huge difference. Then I'm gonna add a, quite a bit of that darker purpley um, shade, purpley pink shade, sorry, right at the base of the petals to give that really, really dark and deep shade there. Again, I'm gonna keep doing this, just adding a touch of color to the base of the petal or where petals overlap, and then really pull that out with water. Again, I'm gonna pop that music back on so you don't have to listen to me chatter away. So once I'm happy with all of the shading, I'm just gonna add, instead of adding darker shading on these leaves, I am just gonna add in the kind of veins that we have. So I'm just taking that color that we have before, I'm not diluting it down in any way, shape or form this time. 
and I'm just gonna add in the long vein that we have right in the center of the leaf and then just pull off some little other veins that we have. Really quick and easy to do, but I do find that this little touch that we have here really does make a huge difference to the overall effect. If you do need to move your paper, go ahead, move it. It's on a palette so you can do just that. I then wanted to create a brown, so I have the crimson color here and I'm just gonna mix that in with the green color that we already have and that is gonna give us a very, very pretty brown color. So I'm gonna use this brown color for the stem. I'm trying to add more of it along one side and then I'm gonna kind of draw that out with some water. So for this stem, before I pop the music back on again, I am gonna be adding the darker kind of color to one side of the stem and then drawing that out with water. And I'm also gonna be adding in some little kind of green touches with the green that we already have. So I'm not gonna mix any more colors now. I am just gonna be using the ones that are already on my palette.
So I'm nearing the completion now. I'm just gonna add in a couple more touches and here is the painting complete. So I am gonna be adding this onto a note card and I do want a little bit of a border around the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop off half an inch along the left hand edge and also the bottom portion of this. And then once that's done, I then wanted to add a little bit of texture to this as well. We have that really beautiful image where I wanted to texturize around the outside. So I'm just gonna take my palette knife. This is the smallest one that I have from the old new palette knife set. And I'm just gonna use that to kind of scruff up the edges. I'm just rubbing it around each of the edges really quite roughly to make sure that we get this beautiful texture. Now we do have the watercolor cardstock that we've used and that's gonna give us some great texture as well. But I found that this kind of edge that we have, it's very vintage, it's a little bit torn, a little bit distressed. It looks very, very pretty with that really beautifully colored watercolor image that we have. So once that has been done, you can see how pretty that is there. I am gonna pop that onto a parchment cardstock um, card base. It is four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm gonna pop up this image that we have now just into place onto the center of that using some of the instant dimension foam tape from Altenew. I then have a sentiment from the Essentials Hot Foil and Die Set. I had this in my stash, so I just pulled that out. I was gonna have a card without a sentiment, but I found this Sending Hugs one that was lovely and foiled, so I chose to pop that one into place. And here is the card complete. I really, really do hope that you like the card and that you've enjoyed the video as well. Thank you so much for joining me. And also, if you do feel inspired by this and create a card, please share too. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again really, really soon. Bye-bye. Hey there, Lydia here. I really do hope that you've just enjoyed the video. If so, please subscribe to the Alter New YouTube channel. Also, turn on the notification bell so you can get your daily dose of crafty techniques and tutorials just like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.